Empirical provide compelling, interactive learning across a range of delivery options. Live on site, live online or online anytime, we have a training course that is ideal for you. For a no-obligations chat about your training requirements, contact us at empirical.com. In terms of the PCC architecture, we really only have one objective to cover off in this session, and that's just looking at the key components and functionality across the PCC domain. So this is the map that we're going to use. This features all of the main entities and we'll take each one in turn looking at their roles and responsibilities. Now starting off with the perspective of the device, the terminal device, you can see that in terms of PCC the device has very little involvement. Yes, it can request services, yes it can request bearer resources, etc. But PCC is ultimately in operation in the network. It's ultimately the PCRF that's going to decide on whether or not this particular device will get what it asks for. So as we move into the network, we'll pick up on the PCRF first of all. We know that the PCRF is the main decision maker in the PCC architecture. So we can see that policy decisions are made and based on information from a variety of different devices in the network. It could be the SPR, it could even be the PCEF or an application function of some description. In terms of the rules that are created, we can see that the PCRF passes those rules to the PCEF for enforcement and that would be as a diameter message over the GX interface. The PCRF also receives IMS related information. Now this would be from a proxy call session control function act acting as an application function and again this information will be passed over the RX interface during an IMS session establishment procedure. It's also possible for the PCRF to support usage monitoring uh, in terms of enforcing any fair use policies that might be in the network and also a key point about the PCRF you may see interaction between PCRFs from a home and a visited network in a roaming scenario. And in that context, you would see the term home PCRF and visited PCRF actually used. But fundamentally, the PCRF makes its policy decisions, creates rules, and sends them to the PCEF for enforcement. So as we move across our architecture, the PCEF is up next. The PCEF is there to enforce rules. Now rules can actually be statically provisioned at the PCF so we might not actually have any involvement with the PCRF. In some networks you might not even have a PCRF. So that would be static enforcement, configuration and enforcement of rules. But in the dynamic case where rules can be created on the fly by the PCRF then it's up to the PCF to enforce those rules also. The PCEF though, once it's had an, a rule installed, it's there to detect the subscriber service data flows. These are the traffic flows for given individual subscribers. Uh, the traffic flows are what we need to detect in order to implement the appropriate policy. A big part of policy is the mapping of QoS. So at the PCC level, we can set specific QoS levels that must be created, shall we say, in the network. It will be up to the PCEF installed at something like the PDN gateway of LTE or the GGSN of GPRS. It's up to that PCEF to make that mapping between requested QoS and the QoS that's actually available in the IP connectivity access network. You can see the PCEF uh, using uh, a couple of diameter based interfaces can also interact with both online charging and offline charging. And finally, the PCEF will be sat there and 
when required, will generate event-based information and send it to the PCRF. An example of that would be something like perhaps the subscriber has changed their access network. That would be a kind of event that the PCEF could potentially report to the PCRF because ultimately a change in something like the access network might mean policy needs to be changed. It might mean that a rule needs to be modified. Moving across the network, we've got the application function as the next entity that we're going to cover off. The application function, particularly in the context of the IMS, would be the proxy call session control function. And in the case of the IMS, the application function would be dynamically providing session information to the PCRF as and when subscribers establish their IMS-based services. Perhaps they would be sending SIP signaling to establish a voice over LTE call, for instance. In that particular context, the, piece, uh, the proxy call session control function, or the application function, would be pulling pertinent information from the session description protocol, the SDP layer information, and it will be passing that information to the PCRF to facilitate the establishment of an appropriate bearer in the IPCAN, the IP Connectivity Access Network. Also, the application function can receive event information from the PCRF across the RX interface, perhaps for whatever reason the bearer in the IP Connectivity Access Network possibly has had to be torn down. The application function would need to know about an event like that. As I said, all communication between the application function and the PCRF is across the RX interface. And although we use the example of a proxy call session control function in the IMS, the application function doesn't always have to be that. It could potentially be some device out there on the internet. It really depends on what scenarios, what situations, what services the service provider is offering to their customer. Moving on. Next, we've got the subscription profile repository. And this is a essentially a, a, a central repository of subscriber information. And that information could be quite varied, but it's really related to the kind of services that the subscriber would be allowed to establish. So we're looking at things like allowed services, QoS profiles, associated charging information that might be required, and also any usage monitoring characteristics that the, um, the PCRF might need to be aware of. So the PCRF can pull all of this information from the subscription profile repository via the SP interface. The only two entities that remain on our diagram are associated with billing. Remember, it's policy and charging control. So it's imperative that as we implement policy, we can charge for it if we need to. So to facilitate that, we've got the offline charging server and the online charging server, or our post-paid server and our pre-paid server. If we just look at the, online, uh, the offline uh, charging server first, um, you can see that this provides credit control for all of our post-paid services. So this is our kind of uh, monthly bill type scenario. And the idea would be that the offline charging server would be able to generate charging data records and send those charging data records to the billing domain so that the subscriber can indeed get their bill as appropriate at the end of the month. In terms of the online charging server, well, this is all about credit control for prepaid services. It's a very different scenario. In prepaid services, the PCEF would be looking to the online charging server in order to gather credit. And as the subscriber consumes their credit, it would be the responsibility of the PCEF to decrement that credit. So there'll be lots of communication taking place during session procedures uh, between the online charging server and the PCEF. As a consequence of that, if the subscriber runs out of credit, it's quite possible that the online charging server could terminate their session. It really depends on what the service provider wishes to do. We might terminate the session, but that's quite drastic. So instead, we might somehow throttle the subscriber's service until they've topped up their credit again. 
The final point to note about the diagram is the fact that the online charging server can send credit level information directly to the PCRF via the SY interface. And the reason for this is just to make things more efficient. It means we don't have to send that credit level information via the PCEF. Now the final part of our map that we need to cover off is just a note on the IP connectivity access network. As you can see, policy and charging control is IP CAN agnostic. Although we often talk about policy and charging control in the context of LTE, whereby LTE would be the IP CAN, that's not always the case. PCC can apply to GPRS. It can also apply to non-3GPP architectures as well, like DSL or even cable. So just in summary, the PCRF is the policy decision maker in the network, and it makes those decisions based on information provided to it by things like the SPR, the PCEF, and the application function. Based on that information, rules can be formulated and passed to the PCEF for enforcement. And we can see that the PCEF must install the rule, enforce it, and remove it if necessary. The application function provides session level information. We talked about a prime example of that being the proxy call session control function of the IMS. And we talked about the fact that the SPR provides HSS-like subscriber information storage. And finally, billing is handled by the online charging server and the offline charging server through interaction with the PCEF. Need to know more? Why not visit our store where you can choose from over 200 hours of video-based training? Alternatively, you can contact us to discuss any specific training requirements you may have.